Hi guys, Jeff Miller here again from Speedbinder. Quick video today, I want to show you this really cool script that I found on the web the other day. I was poking around, I was looking to try to find a, a tool that would, or a, a script that would help me create a, like a color blindness test kind of look, where you have, you know, one object filled with circles of one color and then, and, you know, then surround it with circles of a different color. And I stumbled onto this really awesome script that does a great job, and it's just the funnest thing. And I've, so I'm going to kind of show you how I use it. And um, uh, I'll include in the uh, in the comments or in the description the the, the website where I found it because I want to make sure we give these guys credit because um, the guy that programmed this did a really cool job. Um, but this is something really fun, and you ought to grab this and play with it a little bit. You probably come up with some interesting stuff. So anyway, first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new file, and then to give myself something to work with, I'm going to grab the spiral tool right here, spiral tool, and just click and drag and just create a spiral. Now to make this a little more interesting, um, you know, rather than just set it to a you know, higher width right away, I'm going to grab this thing here which is the width tool and what I want to do is I want to make one end of it wider. You see what it's doing? I'm, I'm controlling the width of this line at the end and then it automatically tapers it down like that. Really slick. So if you haven't played with this width tool before, this is really neat stuff. You can, you know, you can grab it at any point on the line and uh, and play with it. You can really do some some cool stuff with that. Now, just to clean this up, I, I would feel better if that had a, you know, a rounded bullnose kind of end. So I'm just going to go over here into my stroke menu and give it that kind of cap. And that's that. So now our spiral is good. Now, to make this something that we can apply all these circles to, what I'm going to do is, with that selected, I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And all that does is it turns it from a single stroke with all of those you know, attributes into a fill. So now it's a fill. So with that in mind, there, or with that selected, now I can go and, uh, and, and get started on my script. But before I do that, one of the things that's really cool about the way the script works is it allows you to select from your current swatch selection which colors you want to use for the, the circles that are going to fill that. So just to kind of give you a quick idea of how we're going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and in my swatch palette, I'm going to create a new color group and I'm going to just call this thing reds. What I'm going to do then is, so I don't want black in my color group, so I'll move that back up. So I'm just going to go and just grab everything that's you know kind of red that's currently here and if you had specific colors you wanted to do you could um, import them easy enough. But I'm just going to grab a few of these colors that are just in the more or less generally red range of colors. Okay so that's our swatch. We have six reddish colors there. So now I'm going to run the script. Now if you've not used scripts before there's two ways to run them. One is what I've done here is it's, the script itself is called Circle Fill. And again, if you go into the description, I'll have a link for where you can go and download the script. Um, what you do is you just place the script into the appropriate directory in your Illustrator installation area, and just uh, you know do a search on the help for installing scripts, and it'll tell you where to put them. If you don't want to install it like that, if you just want to run it like one time, you can go to Other Script, and it'll bring up a selector. You know, a file system selector, and then you can just go and you know navigate to it wherever you've got it stored on your on your system, and just run it directly from there. But since I've installed it, I'm going to run it right out of the scripts menu. Circle fill. Now, here are the options that it brings up. Max size. These are always expressed as a percentage. So I've played with this a little while. So I'm going to set max size at five and min size at 0.3. That's kind of what uh, you know. You just got to play with that a little bit and get an idea of the feel for you know how you like it to look, and every shape is going to be a little different. So just play around with that. I also like it when the uh, the circles have a little gap between them; they're not right up against each other. So you can control that here with this min distance. So I'm going to put that in at like two points. Now here is the, in the colors option, we have the drop down, and you can see right here at the bottom is reds. So that's the uh, the swatch group that we just created. So I'm going to select that. So all of the circles that are generated will come out of that swatch group. 
So now I'm going to hit OK, and this will take a while. So this thing is not super fast, and it's got a lot of calculations to do, so be prepared to wait for a few minutes when we run. So here we go. Okay, we're back. So here we go. All of our circles are in, and um, okay. My original plan was to uh, put some circles in the background, but honestly, that took forever. So rather than have you sit around and watch me uh, goof off again for another five minutes, um, I'll, we're gonna uh, leave it at this. Um, like I said earlier in the video, the link to the script will be in the description, so check that out or check us out at speedbinder.com under the news area where we'll have the, the blog entry for this. Cool stuff. Have fun with it. It's a really powerful tool, really neat script. You can do some great stuff. Hope you have a great day. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.